Introducing Chance, the Ambassador. Jazz. See you at the show. Good luck, mate. Ladies and gentlemen, how fabulous was that? Please put your hands together for aerial dancers Alicia McLennan and Adrian Smith of Touch Compass Dance Company with Nathan King and his band Paper Plane. Fabulous performance. Thank you so very much, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto Kato. Welcome to the sixth annual Attitude Awards. My name is Simon Dello, and it is an honor, a privilege, and a genuine pleasure to be back again as we celebrate the contributions, the achievements, and the spirit of some remarkable New Zealanders who just happen to be living with disability. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Let's get underway with the first of our awards this evening. It is the Attitude Youth Award, and it celebrates a young person with a bright future, someone who's already made a significant contribution to improving the lives of other disabled people. Our sponsor for the sixth year in a row, a great supporter of these awards, is the Wayne Francis Charitable Trust, represented tonight by trustee Helena Francis. The Minister of Disability Issues, Tariana Turia, was to present the award, but due to illness is unable to be with us this evening. And on her behalf, the Minister of Broadcasting, the Honourable Craig Foss, will give her speech. Good evening, kia ora. Young people probably are the most diverse sector of our population. They come in all shapes and sizes, but the one thing that they've got in common is that they're not adults. There are always a few who stand out, though, as having more adult-like qualities. Things like generosity of spirit, wisdom beyond their years. The young people being acknowledged tonight are all like that. They demonstrate a commitment to the lives of others through their work and actions. So congratulations to all the nominees and thanks to Attitude for creating the opportunity for us to celebrate with them tonight. Thank you. My colleague, the Honourable Tari Naturia, would have loved to have been here tonight. Unfortunately, she can't, so I'll deliver her speech. But I share her words. I am so pleased to be with you here all today on this important day the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. The theme for this year is to break barriers, open doors for an exclusive society and development 
for all. Tonight is an opportunity to really understand what we mean by inclusive. And the finalists are... Lauren Corbett using her strong voice to support students with disabilities at Waikato University. I'm fighting for the students with disabilities to have equal access, whether it be access that they feel comfortable with coming in or whether it's that they can physically access our building. She's Director of Sport and Recreation for the Student Union and in demand as a public speaker. Being smaller and having that extra bit of attention on my life is definitely an advantage because I can use it to show just because I have a disability, it doesn't limit me at all. Being the focus of attention comes naturally to 21-year-old Lauren. She uses her talents to teach disabled children at Star Jam. The main thing I'm teaching them is how to be confident and how to take on the challenges that life throws at them. Jordan Melroy has a message for the world and he's literally shouting it from the rooftops of the globe's tallest towers. It's a personal goal that proving to people that even though you're disabled, you can set yourself huge goals in life and conquer them. Jordan has cerebral palsy and needs a walker or wheelchair to get around. Yet last year, he climbed Auckland's Sky Tower, all 1,029 steps, reaching the top in just over one hour. With my Sky Tower climb, I raised enough money to buy 15 rugby wheelchair for Samo. Jordan's ultimate goal is to climb the world's tallest tower, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. 22-year-old Olivia Shivas is focused on making a name for herself in print. I want to be a journalist. The goal in the end is just to see more people with disabilities in the mainstream media and proving people that they can be, you know, just as professional and do their job just as well as any other person. Olivia was born with muscular dystrophy. The AUT student encounters issues around accessibility every day. This year, Olivia had her first taste of working in the media as an intern for Attitude Pictures. My name is Olivia and I'm a part of Star Jam. Olivia spent eight years teaching performing arts as a leader for Star Jam. As I've grown up, I've kind of learnt that I'm the one that can be helping other people. I've got special skills that other people won't have and I think I really want to use them. And the winner of the 2013 Youth Attitude Award is Lauren Corbett. <laughs> Student Union Disability Officer, Star Jam Tutor and a mentor to others with a disability, Lauren has no doubt where her future lies. My dream goal would be Minister of Disability Issues. I think it's important to focus on who you are and what you can achieve not how the world perceives you. I'm guessing the short microphone is for me. Um, it's pretty inspiring to be among all you here and my fellow youth nominees, um, Jordan and Olivia, you guys are fantastic. So, oh, thank you so much and um, enjoy the rest of the night. And thank you so much to the Wayne. Francis Charitable Trust, the work that you guys do, and along with the work that Attitude Pictures does. It's my Sunday morning inspiration when I'm procrastinating assignments. So thank you so much, and I hope you all enjoy the evening. Thank you. Now, to the Attitude Making a Difference Award, it recognizes someone who's made a significant contribution to improving the lives of people living with a disability. Sponsoring this award is the Ministry of Health, represented by Jill Lane, and accompanying her, the Honourable Ruth Dyson, Attitude Awards Trustee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and our fantastic finalists. Um, it is my pleasure to represent the Ministry of Health here today and acknowledge these fantastic awards. I am delighted to be able to present the Making a Difference Award on behalf of the Ministry of Health. It's my um, privilege to 
join Jill in presenting this award and I want to acknowledge the Ministry of Health and thank them for their ongoing sponsorship. The three finalists are people who are staunch and many of us would say stubborn. They really have made a difference. The three finalists are... 30 years. That's roughly how long 82-year-old Glynis Collins has spent poolside supporting Special Olympics. Tap, go! She's a volunteer for Special Olympics Whangarei. I just love doing it. Glynis, it's been a feeling. Go on. Glynis has five adult children. Her son, Darcy, has Down syndrome. <laughs> Glynis insists Darcy has got as much out of Special Olympics as she's given back to the organisation. I'm challenged as well because I know that they're relying on somebody to, you know, bring the best out of them. Glynis is one of those tireless volunteers. She's a taxi driver, uniform manager and administrator. When you wake up in the morning, you think, oh well, Another day, I'm here again, you know. No, I never get tired of it. I just love people. Gary Endicott's life and work is about maximising opportunities. Born with cerebral palsy, Gary was told he would never walk. Yet he's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, completed the New York Marathon, played rugby league, and he's former New Zealand and world disabled tennis champion. The best way to change society's attitudes is do things that people don't think we're capable of doing. You know, I always thought to die on a mountain, you had to stop, and I don't stop. Gary's the disability facilitator for the Ministry of Education. He says his experience of disability was the best qualification for his job. It's one of the few jobs I'm going to go to where I'm going to be at an advantage. And even if some flash academic Harry goes to university for six years, they're not going to know what, what I know. Gary's approach to teaching is to prepare students for the real world. When I'm working with students, I always try and get them to keep it realistic to their individual situation. And we need to get people ready for life, how it's going to be, not how it should be or how we'd like it to be. After work, Gary mentors young adults with disabilities. His message, simple, straightforward, just like Gary. You've got to have aspirations and expectations and if disability is a factor, it's not going to define me or my life. Robin Hunt should take a deep, proud bow. She's paved the way for the inclusion of people with disabilities. For eight years, she was New Zealand's Human Rights Commissioner. She was a driving force demanding people with disabilities be included as part of the Human Rights Act. And in my life, I've watched disabled people, and particularly people with intellectual disabilities, being seen as not able to speak for themselves. And yet, I've seen people with intellectual disabilities perform in all kinds of situations as well as anyone else. She started out as a feisty journalist. Prejudice she experienced as a vision-impaired female reporter made her determined to stand up for herself and others. I have faced discrimination on ridiculous grounds. I developed a social conscience early on, and I guess I've just always had a recognition of social justice issues. Robin began a quest to change society and was a founding member of the New Zealand Disabled Persons Assembly. Her smart ideas led to a role as an analyst for the Royal Commission on Social Policy. She gets her messages out wherever she can, rallying people to blow the whistle on those who abuse others. Now, I'm really after justice for other people, disabled women in particular, both here and internationally. We've still got a long way to go. And the winner of the 2013 Attitude Making a Difference Award is Robin Hunt. <laughs> Disabled New Zealanders enjoy the level of inclusion we now have thanks to the tireless efforts of women like Robin Hunt. But I think disabled people have to keep their voices heard. They have to keep up the work because 
When it comes to getting your rights, they're not handed to you, you have to take them. I don't know what to say. I was so convinced that I wouldn't win that I didn't think about anything to say. But I firstly want to thank the people who nominated me. They know who they are. I want to thank my friends and family and all the other people who supported me. But I also want to acknowledge everyone else in this room, because it's not really about me at all. It's about us. It's about all of us. It's about the things we do and the way we are in the world. And I've probably forgotten something terribly vital. But I do think that together we can change the world, and that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to go on doing what I've always done. Thank you all very much. And thank you to the sponsors, the Ministry of Health. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we turn to our next award. It recognises the creative spirit. The Artistic Achievement Award is given to an artist who has shown excellence in his or her chosen field. The IHC is sponsoring this award, so please welcome to the stage to present it, Donald Thompson, the National President of IHC and Trustee of the IHC Foundation, and accompanying him, a big supporter of the Attitude family, Judy Bay. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure for the IHC Foundation to be with you again here tonight. This is the third year that we have supported the Attitudes Award. It was Picasso who said, art washes from the soul the dust of everyday life. Artists of all kind enrich our lives. They make our world more vibrant, more colorful, more interesting. The finalists in the Attitude Artistic Achievement Award are Phil Spring, Tiffany Collett, and Alicia McLennan. Phil Springs, an artist and a problem solver. He's used trial, error, and determination to perfect techniques that bring his ideas onto canvas. I love to challenge my mind as much as my body. And when you're creating something, it, it gives you a real buzz. A rugby accident at the age of 19 left Phil tetraplegic. With minimal feeling left in his hands, paintings can take months to complete. When I first started painting, I painted pictures for pleasure, but now I use my art to tell stories. Don't ever call Alicia McLennan wheelchair bound. Her body is her artistic tool. Being on the bank is the most amazing feeling because it gives me such a freedom of movement. Born with cerebral palsy, Alicia is continuously testing her body in every training session. Alicia performs with contemporary dance company Touch Compass. She's also excelled by going overseas and training over there. That's what makes a great dancer, is knowing where the deficits are and then going and getting extra training for them, and she's done that. Now Alicia is leading others and is a graduate of the B Leadership Programme. She's a high achiever. Her personal highlight was performing as the principal dancer in last year's show, Spring. Alicia McLennan's multi-talented skills hinted a spectacular future. Tiffany Collette's paintings are in a striking neo-pop style. Oh, it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's just so new to me. <laughs> Finding ways of becoming famous. <laughs> Tiffany has a learning disability. From a young age, painting was her thing. The staff at Sands have drawn out her artistic ability over the past two years. Tiffany's art's special because of the bright colours. It's a very strong work. She keeps it very simple, and curators and galleries are actually asking for her work now. She's about to have her first solo exhibition of neo-pop art. And with fresh confidence up her sleeve, Tiffany's believing her own press. I think I've become a better artist, and I'm quite proud of myself. And the winner of the 2013 Attitude Artistic Achievement Award is Alicia McLennan. Always a high achiever, her determination has paved a smooth road to success. But it's Alicia's role as a B leader and a tutor at Touch Compass that really sets her apart as an artistic achiever. I mean, seeing how much they can grow and how much they learn and 
I enjoy sparking that passion and love that I have. Thank you. I just want to thank the team at Touch Compass, Catherine, Karen, and Carol, uh, my parents, and my brothers and sisters, as well as all the dancers, Alice. Georgie, Zoe, Emma, Jesse, Sarah. The perfect time now to turn to the Courage in Sport Award. And we welcome Westpac's Sue Foley. Joining her, a guest presenter, well known to anyone with an interest in rugby league, and lately, rugby as well. Blues player, Benji Marshall. I feel like I've already won a prize just coming on stage with Benji. How cool is that? Uh, can I just say, on behalf of Westpac, we are just so proud to support the Courage and Sport Award. And my congratulations to all those who have been nominated and the finalists. And look, tonight, and I'm sure you're the same as me, it's just one of those nights I really, really look forward to. Um, it's a big honour for me to be here tonight to present this award. Um, the main reason I came tonight was to support one of my family members and it gives me great privilege to be here with my family to support her in this actual um, award as well, my cousin Maya Amai. So I'm very, uh, very proud to be here. Uh, you know, sport's been my life over 11 years. I've been playing sport professionally and you can't do it without the help of volunteers and, you know, in this case, carers and I've got this privilege to meet my cousin's carer and just to all the carers and the people who help out, um, you do a great job, so congratulations to you guys tonight as well. Um, and the finalists are... Some talk about moving mountains. Neil Cudby cycles over them. This year, he hand-cycled more than 1,000 kilometres through the Tibetan mountain range to raise money for spinal cord research. The team conquered 10 Himalayan range passes, reaching Mount Everest base camp. It was fantastic to ride and ride and ride all day, every day. Up hills you'll never get bigger. I'll never go higher. I may never have that opportunity again. I just loved it. Neil broke his neck playing rugby as a 17-year-old. He has tetraplegia. All four limbs are affected. Hand cycling affords him a level of freedom. For me, even the regulation ramps are hard work. And so if you put in a bit of dirt and a few stones, and often uh, not achievable in my wheelchair, to the bike, you, you go over those sorts of things. The next adventure is never too far away. Next cycling plans is, is more cycling, but they'll be bigger, further, faster. Mackenzie Kench is always determined to push those boundaries. But Mackenzie's choice of sport tested even her determination. My motivation comes from wanting to be a normal young adult who can be independent as possible. Born with cerebral palsy, Mackenzie's greatest strength is in her mind and her right foot. After just one year, Mackenzie's a confident solo sailor. Going sailing gives me a sense of freedom because it is the only water sport I can do by myself. Sailing-wise, the biggest challenge for me is working out which way the wind is coming from. Disability-wise, the biggest challenge for me is trying to communicate with people on the support boat. I think the exceptional thing about Mackenzie is her attitude to sailing and uh, just getting on with life. Mackenzie's next big goal? To represent New Zealand in sailing at the Rio 2016 Paralympics. In 2008, Phil Thorne contracted bacterial meningitis. He became deaf, blind and paralysed. Phil initially refused to accept his disability till a friend highlighted the amazing life still to be had. Cycling helped me getting through some dark times. Getting out in the fresh air and going hard has helped me to get some 
clarity in my head. Phil puts every bit of energy he can muster into training. The exhilaration of the speed on the bike and the energy that it gives me. The greatest thing about it is I love letting fresh seeds from new dreams drop into my soul. He's set to compete in this year's gruelling Lake Taupo Cycle Challenge. Most able-bodied people wouldn't do this. But he, he motivates you, the heart to get out and do it. This challenge for me is as much mental as it is physical. I wish to use this challenge to inspire others to never let anything in life limit them in any way. Maya's naturally shy, yet she chose a sport that requires her to be fearless. Becoming the only female player for the Wheel Blacks has taken a lot of courage. I enjoy being like one of the boys. Wheelchair rugby is one thing I feel I'm a little bit good at. Maya Amai was in a car fire as a toddler. Years later, a spinal infection left her paralysed. The tragedy destroyed her confidence. Her caregiver, Letitia, recognised that sport could help draw Maya out of her shell. Heaps has changed since I started Two, playing rugby. One, go. I train more and harder. I trust the boys. And I don't need my ching chong bro holding my hand all the time anymore. Maya calls her most loyal supporter her ching chong bro. I just think she's amazing. Everything that she does, every trial that she overcomes, she's amazing. Believing in herself, that's Maya's most important achievement yet. And the winner for the 2013 Attitude Courage and Sport Award is Maya Amai. Courage and Sport winner Maya Amai has grown in confidence. Now she has some big goals. One of my main goals is to go to the Paralympics. I feel she's starting to believe in herself. She's taking control of her life and I, I love that. Tisha's taught me to love life, yep. be happy and love everybody. She just asked if she had to say something. The answer is yes. Thanks, my Ching Chong and my family. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to turn to the outstanding performance in sport. The Sport Performer Award is presented to an athlete who has achieved excellence on the world stage. This year's award is sponsored by Invercare, previous winners of the Employer Award themselves, and represented tonight by Managing Director Jeff Pertzel. Accompanying him, Susie Simcock. Minister Foss, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honour to once again be a sponsor of the Attitude Award sports category. Uh, at Invercare, our brand promise is making life's experiences possible. I'd like to congratulate all of the nominees and finalists for achieving what you have set your mind to. This is a wonderful opportunity to come to something that is so special, and I do congratulate the Attitude people for, the, for this evening. Five athletes who have really competed magnificently on the international stage, and those finalists are... Mary Fisher exploded onto the world swimming scene at the 2012 London Paralympics. She took everyone by surprise, winning a gold medal, two silver, a bronze, and breaking a world record. It was her first Paralympics. When you're representing your country on the world stage with 17,000 people going nuts in the stands, it's just kind of the most amazing thing I've ever done. Mary gradually lost her sight as a child. She adapted using her other senses. 
Earlier this year, Mary's Paralympic success was acknowledged. She was made a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit. There's a lot of things that, that keep me going. It's all my friends and family that support me. And representing New Zealand, you're away with a group of people who've put their lives on hold, dedicated everything that they can to racing at an elite level, and that's something really special. Cameron Leslie strives for constant improvement. At the 2012 London Paralympic Games, Cameron claimed gold in the 150 metre medley and smashed his own world record. To win my gold medal in London was extremely satisfying. You know, you've worked so hard for it and you've, you've, you've given up so much that it's just so good to actually finally achieve what you set out to do four years earlier. Born without fully formed limbs, Cameron admits his success comes from a determination to prove his capabilities. I think my successes in the sporting world have helped me get a bit more confidence about myself. Part of that comes with just being thrust into the limelight and people recognise you on the street. One way or the other, there'll be more headlines on the horizon for Cameron Leslie. At the London Paralympics, cyclist Philippa Gray took the trifecta. Gold, silver and bronze. To be an elite athlete, it takes a lot of dedication. My life revolves around my training and cycling, and if it was easy, everybody would do it. But because it's hard and we keep pushing through during the hard times, I think that's what makes the difference between an elite athlete and a, a normal athlete. 24-year-old Philippa has just 3% vision and severe hearing loss. Co-pilot Laura Fairweather acts as Philippa's eyes. Having a vision impairment, it sort of motivates me to see and do things now while I'm younger, just in case I do lose it. However, having a disability doesn't make me want to chase success more than anybody else. I want to chase success because I want to do it myself. Their partnership delivered a new world record in the 3,000 metres pursuit. Roll on, Rio 2016. Swimmer and multiple medalist, that's Sophie Pascoe an undisputed star of the 2012 Paralympics. Thank you, Mark. Sophie slashed her times and boosted her medal haul. Three gold, three silver and two world records. Yeah, I had very high expectations, but I conquered all of them. I did exactly what I wanted to do and it's a pretty amazing feeling knowing that you're not only doing the goal for yourself, but you're achieving the goal for the rest of New Zealand. Sophie had her leg amputated when she was just two, the result of a lawnmower accident. She began swimming at seven. She's now a household name. This year, Sophie was honoured as the Halberg Disabled Sports Person of the Year. I've got so much to fulfil throughout the years, and I can do that by putting it in the pool. OK, um, great pleasure to announce the winner of the 2013 Attitude Sport Performer of the Year Award, Sophie Pascoe. Sophie cemented her place in history as one of New Zealand's most successful sportswomen of all time. To represent New Zealand is obviously a goal that I've had since I was a little kid and to finally be able to have the silver fern on your chest is an amazing feeling. It's very humbling but it's also knowing that you're not only achieving your goals for yourself, you're achieving them for New Zealand. Uh, sport for me has really overshadowed my disability and my career and uh, I see myself today as hopefully inspiring people with what, only what I do best and that's swimming, that's what I love. You know, when no different to everyone uh, else out there in society, you know, we walk past with pleasure and pride and that's why we represent New Zealand. Thanks. You remember a little earlier Benji Marshall's pride in presenting his cousin Maya Amai with the Courage in Sport Award. And she would be the first to say that she owes much of her success to the support of her whanau and one woman in particular, caregiver and friend Letitia Hayter. This 
Award. The Attitude Spirit Award celebrates those with an X Factor, a person who epitomises the positive spirit at the heart of the Attitude TV series. Now, these finalists are from vastly different backgrounds, but there's a common theme which I think I'll summarise as, thanks for the thought, but I'll do it myself. Employment agency Drake Meddox has been a consistent supporter of these awards, and I'd like to invite General Manager Gay Barton to come forward to present this award. Accompanying her, the one and only Professor Richard Fall, internationally recognised expert on the workings of the human brain, whose research offers promise for some of the causes of disability. Would you please welcome them to the stage? Good evening. Drake Meadox is proud once again to be a sponsor and an advocate of the Attitude Awards. I know our six-year association with Attitude continues to help drive a more accepting, respectful and inclusive society. Well, what an amazing and what an inspirational evening. It's incredible. Um, I just, I've been studying brain research for 35 years. I've seen more creativity of the human brain and human mind walk across the stage tonight than I've seen in my years of research. And so, it is my pleasure to announce the three finalists in the Spirit of Attitude Award, and they are. Margaret Olden knows how to network. She uses her connections to drive fundraising for the disabled community. My motivation is always to give back. Margaret lives with cerebral palsy, short-sightedness, and severe arthritis in her hands. She devotes her life to her own charitable trust will make sense. All the money she raises goes to projects for the disabled community. We've raised about $2,000 and we're going to get a standing frame that will be placed in a rehabilitation centre. Margaret's well known in her Auckland community. Drawn to her positivity, people readily donate. Because I've got a lot more to prove that I can achieve and that I can do what I'm set out to do. Elizabeth Charleston was once a competitive horse rider and international model. Multiple riding accidents culminated in one severe head injury. She founded Think, the head injury network for Kiwis to raise awareness. I've been brought to my knees in life and I just don't want other people going through this. So. Instead of my experience with head injury being a complete waste of time and knowing that I'm preventing some head injuries out there. The network was so successful that the New Zealand Head Injury Society joined forces. 
Elizabeth passes her skills on to younger riders. Her first instructions are about safety. It's really heartwarming to get these private messages on Facebook to say thank you for saving our child's life. Vanessa McGoldrick knew she had the power to change lives. She just needed to get that law degree first. I think I recognised fairly early on that lawyers had this ability to go and advocate for other people, to go out and fight for their corner, and that really appealed to me. Vanessa had to overcome her own challenges first and fight bureaucracy to be admitted to the bar. I do. Today, she fights for the rights of people with disabilities. For them, it's a bit of a relief not having to tell their story right from the beginning because I've lived the life, I've walked the walk, the same that they have. Vanessa was born without kneecaps and quadricep muscles, a genetic disorder called Nail Patella Syndrome. I think that I am a better person and I've achieved more in my life and done more things because of my disability. It's given me a passion to try all of the things that people tell me that I can't do. She has high levels of fatigue, but the solo mum is still active with her two girls. I have huge dreams. I have huge ambitions to get out there and do things that other people mightn't think are attainable. So the sky's the limit. I set the bar as to what is possible in my life. And the winner of the 2013 Spirit of Attitude Award is Vanessa McCaldrick. Vanessa McGoldrick has shown a real spirit of attitude to achieve her dreams. I'm really proud of her. Like not many people can say, my mum's a single mum. She's got, she managed to look after two kids, working and did a full-time law degree. Now she wants to take up the fight for the disability community. As a lawyer, I want to achieve justice for the people with disabilities out in our community who are normally unable to access those, either because of limited means or because of an inability to be able to communicate their needs. I, Vanessa McGoldrick, want to change things for people with disabilities. I'll be like Lauren, I'll take the little microphone. Fancy giving it to a lawyer. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thanks to Drake Maddox. Without the sponsors, we wouldn't have the Attitude Awards, so thank you to all the sponsors who've really put out tonight. I'd really like to thank my family. Without the support of your family, you don't get to get where you want to be. I also owe a lot to my employer, Henderson Reeves, who have supported me through the entire law degree, employing me but allowing me time off to study and to take that time to make sure that I pass those exams. And now, now's a new stage in my life. Now I can use that law degree to help the community that means so much to me. Thank you. Attitudes of employers are important. Employment is an issue for all of us. But job seekers with a disability face more challenges than most. Often they're simply up against outdated attitudes. What it takes is employers who see not obstacles but opportunities, and our next award celebrates just such employers. And tonight we welcome the ACC Chairperson Paula Webster to present this award, accompanied by Phil O'Reilly, Chief Executive of Business New Zealand. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure and honour to be here tonight. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, both ministers that are here, uh, the Honourable Judith Collins and also Craig Foss. It's uh, a a real sign of, of how much this award means to the community, um, that it draws in so much support. It's a real honour to be here uh, with the ACC team uh, to talk about employment and to talk on behalf of the employers of New Zealand. And can I commit the employers of New Zealand through the Business New Zealand family to working closely with disability groups and advocates to ensure that that choice, that real choice, is more readily available to more people who want to pick up that opportunity to contribute their skills and talents in that way. Thanks once again. 
The finalists for the Attitude ACC Employer Award are... Here at CCS Canterbury, a lived experience of disability is a real plus on your CV. A solid strategic plan means 60% of staff live with a disability. We need the best people to be doing this work and sometimes the best people are people who have a disability. When Tara Loy applied for a job, managers recognised her abilities first and foremost. CCS has been very supportive of my visual disability. That has helped me get to where I need to be so I can, I can work and feel confident and actually be a, a valued member of the company. CCS policy ensures people feel okay to ask for help in the workplace. And they provide transport to and from work for anyone who needs it. I think other employees need to think about employing um, people with difference. That's it from Matt. He's got to get back on the job. <laughs> Fairfax Media has recently recognised the valuable contributions of disabled workers. Now it's going almost door to door, actively encouraging other companies to follow suit. Project manager Anna Marie Jameson started by creating two positions. Emma and Chloe both have intellectual disabilities and love their jobs. There are so many people that are touched with a disability. Why not represent that community in our workforce? Chloe and Emma are admin assistants. The roles have been adjusted to suit their skills. But those skills keep growing, along with their confidence and sense of independence. I love it. You know, the people are really nice. The company's nice. My boss is amazing. It suits to my life, my left round, remember, because I thought I'd never get a job here. Excited by the impact of their own employment strategy, Fairfax developed a campaign called Creative Spirit. My message to other employers is absolutely give it a go. Why not step up and make a difference? When Justin took over the family transport business, he wanted to make sure it maintained that family focus. The staff that work here, from my perspective, I consider them as, as friends as well as colleagues. Penny Fletcher had been working for Justin for just nine months when she contracted meningitis. It resulted in the amputation of both her legs and the fingers on one hand. Justin always reassured me that depending on the outcome, there would always be something here for me. And I think it was clear that, you know, Penny being able to have that focus of returning to work was a big part of her, her rehabilitation. Funding was taking too long, so UserBus paid for their own building modifications. Because at that time, Penny was using a wheelchair. They lifted my desk up with four by twos because I couldn't fit under there in my wheelchair. We knocked out a wall to go to the toilet because the wheelchair couldn't fit in. <laughs> when they'd finished, they went to her house and sorted that out too. From an employee point of view, I think you get a lot of loyalty from that. And certainly it shows in their work and how they value their jobs as well. And the winner of the 2013 Attitude ACC Employer Award is CCS Disability Action, Canterbury West Coast Branch. Respect and understanding. Two core values at CCS Canterbury West Coast. But most of all, it's confidence in people's ability to do the job. It's not a passive arrangement. It's not something that as an employer we give and nothing comes back. It's a very mutual, reciprocal relationship. And that's why it works, because we each value what each is contributing. Oh, this is really overwhelming and very humbling. And what we do is we work together to make work work. And just really looking forward to getting on and keep doing it. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a slight change. It's time for the Hall of Fame announcement. The Hall of Fame recognises outstanding lifelong service to the disability community. The award is supported again this year by the Lion Foundation, which was the founding supporter of these awards and a valuable partner in ensuring they happen every year.
Lion Foundation trustee Ross Pickett is here with us tonight to present the award, and with him is Attitude Head of Content, Tanya Black. Good evening, everybody. Um, the Lion Foundation helps many charitable organisations every year to enhance the lives of many New Zealanders across many different activities. The Hall of Fame Award recognises and celebrates at the outstanding contribution of one individual who has done so much to advance the interests of those with disabilities and has really impacted the community of New Zealand. Alexia Pickering has spent a lifetime championing accessibility for all New Zealanders. Access has ruled Alexia's life. Right from her early years, primary school was by correspondence because no school would accommodate Alexia in her wheelchair. She eventually found a high school that would take her, but she wasn't allowed to join the academic stream. So Alexia made sure that she topped the home economics course instead. In her hometown of Christchurch, she put an idea to the council, introduce a parking system that allowed people with disabilities to park for a little bit longer. This eventually developed into the mobility parking card system. So any time you pull into one of those parks, legitimately, you have Alexia to thank. Constantly breaking down barriers, Alexia has served on many inquiries and commissions and is currently the Chair of the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment's Access Advisory Panel. Alexia's long career in public service has been recognised with a Queen's Service Order and Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit. Tonight, we add one more honour, induction into the Attitude Hall of Fame. Say. Until tonight, I had no idea there were so many ways that you could say thank you. But I do it humbly because this would be the pinnacle of my long career. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this year we have a new innovation. The People's Choice Award voted by you, the viewers. Here to tell us more about that is the producer of Attitude Live, right from the Wheel Blacks, Dan Buckingham. Not so long ago, we had a, a moment at Attitude where we, we actually stepped back and took stock of just how many great stories we've had the privilege to tell. Over nine years, we've built a library of, of just such a variety of experiences. And we decided we had to create a platform where we could share these stories as well as stories yet to be told. With this in mind, Attitude Live was born. We decided it was a great place to have a new award, a People's Choice Award. So after 23, with the 23 finalists, after a month of voting, 16,000 votes cast in all, we have a winner. So it's my pleasure to announce the winner of the 2013 People's Choice Award is Gary Endicott. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to get this award. It could have gone to any one of the 23 people, and uh, that's probably what makes it a wee bit sweeter. So um, thank you for <laughs> I'd like to thank my employers, the Ministry of Education. They've changed my life, um, because there's been a lot of talk tonight about how much talent is in this room. I fully agree with that. But without opportunity, um, the talent is wasted. I'm really happy to hear that there's been so much talk tonight about the importance of employment. I put checkbooks in cardboard boxes for 10 years, um, had the same disability, same family, um, and same attitude. And all of a sudden, somebody came along, Murray Roberts, who gave me a chance. So, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, thanks very much. Twenty-three fantastic nominees. He acknowledged them all and said how much pride he had in beating them all. That's fantastic. In the course of the evening, we've met seven award winners. 
each one of them with an extraordinary story to tell, and each of them carefully considered for the Attitude ACC Supreme Award. It's time now to find out who of them the judges have chosen. And we're privileged tonight to have with us a woman who knows much about weighing up the odds, the Minister of Justice, the Honourable Judith Collins, who will present the award, and she's accompanied by one of the best fundraisers in the business, the supremely talented Dame Rosie Horton. And can I say good evening to everybody? I'd like New Zealand on air to just hear this one little thing from me. Actually, the Attitude uh, television show is my one little ray of sunshine in the morning, in the weekend, so please make sure you continue to look after me. <laughs> because I'll get really mean if it doesn't keep going. Thank you very much. And the category winners and the finalists are... Winner of the 2013 Awards ACC Supreme Award is Robin Hunt. Um, I don't know what else to say except thank you. Thank you for the evening. Thank you for the sponsors. Thank you for Attitude. And I've been thinking about all the things that I've heard tonight and thinking attitudes come such a long way. We started the journey a long time ago with Inside Out, the first disability television program, but Attitude have taken it, picked it up and run with it and taken it for miles. So thank you all very much. I'm totally overwhelmed. I don't know what else to say, but thank you all very much. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Gentlemen, you remember earlier this evening we kicked off things with a wonderful performance by our act that has come back onto stage. Nathan King in Paper Plane, accompanied on ukulele by Samantha Kalolo, performing Love, Oh Love. When I'm trying to relate in my own foolish way, in some But in love, oh love, there are no guarantees You just have to jump and hope someone catches you Can't look down, just take a deep breath and believe Oh, in love, oh love, there are no guarantees You just have to jump and hope someone catches you Can't Take a deep breath. 